What is going on, people? This is a different kind of video. Um, I need some help, and I want you guys to help me. I have not had a job 22, 22 years, and I've not had a normal job in 20 four years so let me go ahead and explain why I'm doing this video I want you guys to tell me what is wrong with jobs I have not had a job in two decades so I don't really know what the issue is with jobs I don't know what's the the drama, the trouble. And also, to further address that, when I did have a job, I wasn't abused. I never had a job where I was abused or made of fun or... It, that didn't happen, so... And also, I can actually list the majority of my jobs really quickly. My first job was the United States military. My second job was working at Northside Hospital. My, actually, that's not true. My first job was United States military. While I was in the military, I worked part-time at Cobb General in the lab. Then my third job was Northside Hospital. My fourth job was Scottish Rite Children's Healthcare before it merged with Emory. And then my fifth job was LabCorp. And LabCorp is where I went into the whole situation where I crashed my car, lost my job, became homeless. And then I had a bunch of, I'm not even going to consider these jobs because these, you know, I went from having jobs from, I was in the military six years. I worked in Northside seven years. I worked at Scottish Rite five years. I went from that to a bunch of temporary um, labor day jobs like literally I would go to the labor pool and I would work in a month I would work at 10 to 15 different companies so I don't even consider them like job jobs you know um, I would consider that to be temp temp work temp work so I really don't even count that that period that uh, three year period where I was just floundering. I, I, I really, I wasn't hitting on nothing. Nothing was going well. It was a struggle. It was a struggle. And then back into the job world, rent a crate, panel systems unlimited, business environments. That is my complete job history. That's it. Uh, I, I don't know what you guys are going through with jobs. And I was watching some videos and I was just sitting there like, you know, before I make my video based upon my experiences two decades ago, um, like I said, I was never abused. I was never mistreated in any job I had. Even with the crappy temp, I, I was never, none of that stuff ever happened. So when I watch these videos where, you know, first, let's talk about the fire movement. All these people are trying to get the gang of money so they don't have to work. This, this is their express purpose for fire. So I can live my life. I can control my time. I can do what I want to do. This is why so many people are getting into fire, right? And then I watch JT Hustles or JT Automations, whatever he, he changed his name. He did the video where this guy was able to quit his job in four months. And whenever I hear something like that, because I want to talk about that, um, you, you, you start you a side hustle and you quit your job in four months. Here's something that happens when you quit your job as someone who's been through it. 
it actually my last job prepared me for business ownership number one no one's setting your schedule anymore you got to set your own schedule as many people found out during this pandemic that you've got to be self-motivated i've seen numerous articles and youtube videos where people were struggling to work from home because they were removed from their structure so you gotta you gotta do all that stuff. So a job not only pays you money, it provides you structure, it provides you guidance that disappears when you start your own business. It just completely goes away. So I I I, I hear that this is the desired goal. And once again, before I made my thunder scorched earth video where all these clowns are lazy, they're bums, they're um, because this is my first thought. You're lazy. You you just worthless. You want to go ahead and get all this money so you can sit down and do absolutely nothing. But before I made that video, I decided to come to you guys and ask you, what is going on with jobs? Like, how many of you actually like your job? Now, when I was at Northside and the Scottish Rite before I became disenfranchised with the money, I actually liked my job. Uh, I liked being in the military. It was fun. I, I had a lot of really good friends. It was fun. So number one, do you actually like your job? Number two, do you hate your job? Do you hate your job? Number three, does your job pull so much out of you? Once again, this has never been my experience with jobs. I never had a job that left me depleted, worn out. I, I just, I didn't, I didn't really go through that. I went through situations where I worked really hard and I came home tired, which is kind of normal. But I'm just hearing all this stuff like uh, I'm not going to be in corporate America for 20 years and let them suck my soul out. But once again, I don't know what the current state of jobs are. I, I have no clue to what the current state of jobs are. None whatsoever. So I want you guys to tell me what is going on with jobs. Because I don't know. I've not had a job in 23 years, player. 23 years. So I've been living a self-directed, a self-guided life for two decades, going on three decades. Essentially, I've been waking up and doing whatever the hell I wanted to do. I've had no one over me, no one telling me what I needed to do, no overseers, no managers, no VPs, no corporate culture. I've dealt with none of that. So I don't know. I really don't know. And I remember when I first started here on YouTube, I used to talk harshly about jobs. I guess I got older and I mellowed out a little bit. I don't know. And I have a lot of the people saying, hey, stop stop talking about those who have these jobs so badly. And um, I was um, like, okay, all right, all right, all right. I'll ease up on the rhetoric. But <clears throat> one of the things that I've learned, because you know, I want to be honest with you guys, is um, you're looking at the process and this is once again um, this whole notion of getting one of these money making schemes like there's a I understand it in theory I've never done it medical commodities where you go out and buy these diabetic test strips I had a client who used to sell diabetic test strips like six seven thousand boxes a month so i know a little bit about that but <clears throat> um i've kind of chilled out on the whole job thing because essentially 
the messaging is now, uh, I will not tell you to quit your job. I will not tell you to, I will tell you to add more to it. I wouldn't tell you just to quit your job and be out, be out here in these streets, be out here in these internet streets, um, out here trying to make some money and with little support. I would not do that. But I really want you guys to scream at me in the comments. Let me know what's your worst job experience that you've ever had. What 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 um is going on with your job? What is driving you crazy about your job? Is it the pay? Is it the job itself? What what's going on? You know, I I really want to um get a better understanding of what you guys are going through with these jobs because I simply don't know. I simply don't know. I've not, like I said, I've not had a job in 23 years. So I, you know, and back then the world was different. The world was uh, different. Um, the world was slower. Yes, we could say the world was much, much slower. The world was, um, easier. The world moved at a slower pace. And I want to know what you guys are dealing with with these jobs because maybe I'm off base, but I cannot think that all of these jobs are horrible and terrible and they're literally sucking the soul out of your body. I'm just sitting there like, like my assistant, you know, she get paid well. She works in a comfortable environment. The work's not like terribly hard. I've heard no complaints. Um, so one of the things that I feel, and I could be off base with this, but this is an assumption, is the lifestyles of social media. When you can pick up your phone and see someone living a splendid, fantastic, crazy life, you can see they're taking these trips. You can see that they're doing all these big, bold, marvelous things. They're living these extraordinary lives. And you see this every time you pick up your phone. That did not exist 23 years ago. That didn't exist. So I feel that because of social media and there are people out there in social media I'm part of social media. I feel that I'm doing a good job putting out information. And then there's a group of people who are lying to you. I'm not even going to miss words. They're straight up lying to you. They're trying to trick you. Uh, there's a number of people here on YouTube who present themselves to be wealthy and they're not. They don't have no money. If you were to look at their actual bank account, you'd be giggling because you you like they don't have that much more money than you do. And there's a lot of people. Uh, I saw a video the other day talking about why I finance cars. I'm not going to get into it. Because uh, what I'm going to do is stay in my lane. Because uh, I was paying cash for cars before I became a millionaire. I know that works. And you're. I, I feel that these content creators lack a greater understanding of who their audience is. Because I can tell you for a fact, only a small percentage of people who are watching these creators can finance supercars. Only a small percent. Because they don't have the income. You know, let, let's go ahead and have this conversation. If you wanted to finance a $240,000, dollars car, First thing is you're gonna to have to put forty to eighty thousand dollars down. First thing off the rift, 
and then you're going to have to have a six figure income before the bank would even consider it. Who are we talking about? I've given you the numbers. 75% of America only makes, makes less than $60,000 a year. 75% of America. 90% of America doesn't make six figures. 90% of America. So when you're talking about financing a supercar, only a small segment of America can do that to begin with. It's not like you can go with your 850 credit score and your $50,000 a year annual salary and afford a, 50, a supercar. You can't. You couldn't even finance this car. You couldn't do it. So uh, I'm going to pull away from that because you've grown. If you want to believe in someone who is showing you a good game, and you want to listen to their advice, and let's go ahead and have this conversation. I had someone, I was talking about Rich Wayne. I believe Rich Wayne is absolutely lying to you about age corporations. The stuff he says doesn't work. This is someone who has corporations. This is from someone who has businesses. This is from someone who has business credit. I, I actually know how this goes, and what he says ain't gonna fly. And this person said he, his first response was like, he called me a hater, he called me a hater. And then his second response, like, oh yeah, I've had much success with the advice of Rich Wayne. And I challenged this person. I said, all right, send me proof. If you send me proof that what you, you know, and IE, I need to see a business credit card from your age corporation from when you bought your age corporation, from when you got a business credit card and you got a line of credit. Send me proof of you getting those two things and I will give you a thousand bucks. I ain't heard from him. I ain't heard from him. So if these things were so easy, come take my money. Take it. It's on the table. Take it. See, this is what I'm talking about. Right now, the moist men parade are full of narcissists. Now, what is a narcissist? A narcissist is a person who has a greater belief in self than actual evidence would suggest. This is like someone who's walking around, who's 5'5", five five, talking about, I'm going to the NBA. I got hops. Since Muggsy Spud Webb and Muggsy... B those are the last two guys we've seen under six feet in the NBA. Last two. <laughs> and a narcissist would believe that they have the ability, even though the NBA isn't calling them, even though they have no trials, even though they can't even get play D1 college ball. They can't even get in D1 college ball, which is way easier to get into than uh, the NBA. They can't even do that, but they feel that they will get into the NBA, they feel that they will be able to do these things. And this is one of the things I deal with the, on a daily basis with these moist, narcissistic men. These moist, narcissistic men feel that we're on the same level, even though I've shown you my pay stub, I've shown you receipts, I've shown you titles, I've shown you corporate papers, they feel that we're on the same level because in their mind, they feel that they're that good, even though there's no proof of concept. That's a narcissist. And, um, you know, with the information that I put out, none that I put out is going to hurt you. But the problem is, here, here, here's the problem. You got to work. That's the big issue. And that's why I'm doing this video. Tell me what is going on with these jobs. Tell me what is going on with these jobs because um, you got to work. You got to work, man. And so many people don't want to work. And that's where I get into the information, the problem. 
because I've got someone over here and I will mention his name, JT Automations. He put out a video where this guy got into medical commodities and he was able to quit his job in four months. So I got that over there and I have other people like JT Hustles. And like I said, I don't have no problem with JT Hustles, JT Automations, but I feel once again, that the origination point and the point to getting to this money, I feel is inflated. Um, I don't really think that the average person is going to be able to start a business or something and quit their job in four months. I don't think that's going to happen, knowing what I know. I feel that that type of content is harmful because it plants seeds in people's heads that, hey, I can do this and quit my job. And, the you know, will there be some people who will be able to hustle and quit their job? Yeah, absolutely. But we cannot hold up the exceptions as the rule. And that's what I see a lot on social media. I see a whole bunch of people holding up exceptions as if they are the rules. And um, that's kind of my issue with the JT automations. The uh, an another issue is this is very, very big on YouTube. And I'm probably going to do a whole separate video on it. Challenges. People will do a one week or a one month drop shipping challenge. Uh, this is something that's big with uh, Uber Eats. All right, so as I was saying before my other camera shut off, um, I've been doing this car rental business five weeks. And June is going to be my first month that I'm going to get a significant data sample to influence future decisions. So we're talking just two months there. So about two months three months, I will have significant data to make better decisions. And I got money. I got time. And it's still taking me time and effort to get this data to make better business decisions. Where am I going with this? So someone that comes on YouTube and is like, hey, drop shipping challenge 30 days. 30 days, it ain't, it ain't enough time. It ain't enough time. Drop shipping, I drop ship for six months. Significant data sample. I drop ship for a year, even better data sample. Uh, essentially, you know, I, I had some people's like, you know, typical rookie mistake. Uh, what's the first thing I said when I started this business? I know nothing about the car rental business. I know nothing about selling cars. But I'm going to say this, because this is the elitist in me. I'm going to make more money in this business than you are, Mr. Veteran. I guarantee it. And it ain't going to take me a year. I'll probably make more money than you in August. That's kind of funny, Mr. Veteran. Mr. I know the laws of the game, but I don't have no money. It's hilarious. Um, but this is a big, big problem with YouTube big big problem hustles challenges and going back to my original questions is what is wrong with jobs today i i've not had a job i don't even know if i could work a job at this juncture in my life w wait a minute i mean this morning i rolled out of bed at 8 30 then uh, i took a shower Puzzled around a little bit, met this renter. All rental cars, all eight, of my, eight, all eight of my cars are out. If I had placed all eight of my cars on hire car in the beginning when I got it, I'd be sitting on a ten thousand dollar month. Ten thousand. I'm just sitting here like, mm. but I didn't know that. I didn't know in the beginning. I, I had no clue. I had to get my data, and honestly. I am glad that I bought the vehicles 
I'm glad that I actually started participating in the car sharing programs and I'm glad I got this data because if I continue to watch YouTube videos, I still wouldn't know what I know. I would not know. And here's a really important lesson for you guys. You have to participate in the marketplace to get that real data. You have to participate. So um, you will see me, and this is why I say August, because uh, June, June, I'm gonna get more vehicles. I'm going to get the GPS trackers and all this other stuff. In August will be probably the first month of where I will be with the, the allotted budget and see what that makes. Because uh, actually I'm using this to talk smack about dividend stock investing. Um, dividend stock investing to me is a suboptimal investing strategy. To me it is. And you know, I'm just telling you guys, you know, tell me what, what is going on with jobs? And is it jobs or is it you? Because when I was working jobs, you know how many job interview interview appointments I missed? Zero. There was not one job interview that I set up that I didn't just show up. Not one. Not one. Not one. So it's a different environment. It's a different um, top, you know, it's a different world. And I want, like I said, I want you guys to tell me everything that's wrong with jobs. Tell me what you're going through. What, you know, um, I saw this video and this chick quit her job because her boss told her she could not go visit her sick grandfather. Let me tell you a little story. I was working the job and I had a, a, a family family member who wasn't doing well. This is how I handled it. Hey, I got to go visit my uncle. He's in the hospital. I'll be back such and such day. That was what I told my job. I did not ask them, could I go see my sick relative? I went to see him. He died shortly after. And I went back to my job. Did they fire me? Nope. I'm like, what is going on with people? Why are people so, like, it, this whole, my boss, I'm, I'm just sitting there, and I'm just like, all right, my grandfather's sick. I'm checking out. If they fire you, you get unemployment. I mean, <clears throat> this, this whole notion of being free, this whole notion of doing what you want. I'm going to say something <clears throat> that's going to come across as very insensitive. The way that you're living your life right now is a reflection of the way you'll be living your life 10 years from now. If you ain't starting the business or doing some other stuff or pushing forward and you're just waiting for one of these JT automations or Noel or someone to drop some game in your ear, I am willing to bet cash money 10 years from now you're going to be doing the same crap you're doing today. How you're living today is a reflection of your future. I don't care who's on YouTube. I don't care who's on Instagram. Until you change how you react and come in and, and participate in the world, ain't much changing in your life, player. Much Ain't much changing. It's just not. And this is one of the things that um, I kind of hate about YouTube is the algorithm gets on the trendy, the hot topics, whether these trendy or hot topics actually make sense for the average person. That doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Um, people will do what they want. But like I said, if you are not 
If you're working a job that you hate and you've been there for a minute, that's who you are. That's who you are. And like I said, the way that you live in the day is going to be a reflection of your next 10 years. So you need to change what you're doing right now versus waiting on someone to come save you. Someone to drop that free 99, that free 99, that free game so you could go. You ain't going to do nothing. You ain't going to bust a grade. You want to know why? If you got time, as some people in the YouTube comments have said, you got time to watch um, all of these YouTube, Instagram personalities and know who they are and what they do. When are you working on your business? I had someone who was like, you know, the, the Porsche was supposed to be the, I got the Porsche using the credit game, even though I, I shown the title. And it's like, we don't know what he does. We know what this person does. We know what this person does. And I'm like, all you do is sit back and watch other people work and you're not doing no work yourself. That was my response to this person. We don't know what you do. And in today's world, we have developed watching entrepreneurs has become a sport. It's become a sport. You know, everyone loves Gary Vee. Everyone loves uh, Grant Cardone. Everyone loves all of these hustlers. They love to see them make moves. They love to hear them talk, but they don't like taking action. They don't like taking action. And that's what will change your life. That's what changed my life. Me taking action. Me um, doing what I need to do. Me actually rolling up my sleeves, actually creating an LLC, actually starting my first business. That's what changed my life. Not me sitting around watching other entrepreneurs work uh, essentially I don't even know and that, like you know a lot of people have um, said you know maybe you should reach out to Maddie CEO or you should reach out to uh, some other person I'm going to tell you why I'm not reaching out to these people I've had a, a certain level of social media success and I know to be socially media successful doesn't take any real business skills. It takes internet skills. There are skill sets being deployed, but it doesn't take real business skills. And one of the reasons I spent my own money and I got my own information is now I know what will work for my car rental business. I actually know I don't have anyone whispering in my ears like, try this, try that. Because essentially, when someone gives you some advice like that, whether it works or not, it doesn't really matter to them because it, it, it's, it's, it's not um, going to impact them one way or another. And also from stuff I've seen that many people, uh, there was a guy here on uh, YouTube who was doing a bunch of hard car videos and he just dropped off. He hadn't made a video in a while. And I, I have a reason, I have a feeling why you made it, because it ain't going well. And um, like many of you are giving me these comments, I'm about to say something that's gonna sound elitist. Uh, I started with 150. What did you start with? Your good credit, so you were able to get three cars? So, I'm gonna make, more money because I've actually had money to start a real business and I'm gonna do videos talking about that because so many of you wanna start, like right now there, there's so many videos about trucking, how to get into trucking with no money, how to get, how about get some money and get into a real business because essentially since I started with 150 and the first real month will be August because right now I'm running experiments in a year, I'm going to be able to scale at 150 to six figures a month. 
one year. And for you uh, Instagram people and who, who don't understand how hard that is, let me, let me give you the, 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 the map the math on that. Let's say it's go from August to August and I go from uh, whatever August numbers are, because I don't know, I haven't charted them, to I'm making six figures. So from August to August, I create a business that does six figures. I have created a million dollar business in one month and the average entrepreneur, the average small business makes 87,000 a year. You see where I'm going with this? I am exceptional. I know a lot of you moist men, you narcissists, you don't want to give me credit and that's cool because at the end of the day, all you're hurting yourself by refusing to listen to someone who's smarter, wiser, better looking, and uh, richer than you. You refuse to listen because you're jealous like Becky. You know, Becky with the good hair. And, uh, you know, we're going to get, like I said, we're going to be talking about real business, real concepts. And like I said, anyone that's doing these challenges, they're not doing them to help you. They're doing them to get views because a 30 day challenge isn't a big enough data sample to be give you long term information. Because in a year there's peaks and valleys and there's you know there, there's, there's so many things that go on in there. But once again, go ahead, let me know what's the problem with these jobs. Let me know what you're going through and I will see you guys in the next one.